Hi everyone, welcome back if you've been here before. If not, welcome, I'm happy to have you. As always, timestamps are below in the description and in the video timeline if you want to skip the intro. So today I want to talk about vending at in-person events with your art. I have been doing so lightly since about 2017. I took a break in 2019, the pandemic hit, so nothing in 2020 either. Before literally a month ago, I'd usually vend with my friend and then roommate. We were both creating spray paint art and me with my extra little Etsy products. We were enjoying setting up our 10 by 10 foot space and putting things on display for everyone to see. Back then, my brand was literally all over the place. But since that rebrand, I've completely overhauled how my booth looks and I'm doing the market events alone because my friend moved away. I miss you. And I just want to dive into that experience a little in case anyone else is interested in doing this sort of thing. I'm able to go through quite a bit of trial and error with products because of my job. So I want to pass on what's worked for me so you can skip wasting any money. So if during any part of this video, you'd like more information on what something is or how I did it or even alternatives to it, please, please, please ask in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you. So let's start off with a little before and after. My first booth setup, we had one table, six foot, and two TV tray tables to set up all of our art. Eventually, we also utilized the wire grid panels to close pin our art onto that for people to see. But you may notice it's just, it's fairly simple. Everything is laid out as is, nothing fancy, and we usually sit there and continue to create art or I'd press buttons as people came by. And we completely still sold items with this setup. You do not need to have the most cohesive setup in the world in order to start doing these types of events. Here is my booth now after my brand redesign. Three tables, two six foot, one four foot table. Grids are now off the ground and on the table so people can view the items on them even easier. There's much more room for products to be spread out. I tried to keep everything within the brand colors and aesthetic, but even after this, I still found some ideas that just didn't work out. Florida humidity curled my decals and stickers. The stickers ended up being fine, but some larger decals ended up with permanent bubbles because the backing paper warped. And I think my only options at this point are to clearance them out or trash them. I would not sell them as is at full price. Placing most of my items on the grids was also super tedious. Most decals required multiple clothespins, and it took so long to set up just to hope that they stay straight. Prints were also displayed in a way that needed some improvement. And about halfway through the event, I ended up fixing it. I originally had them organized by size, but some designs are not offered in certain sizes. I just don't have them on hand, and I couldn't tell my customers which ones those might be. So, to make it so customers resonated with the design first, I stacked the prints by design and laid them next to each other, kind of like this. Original art was also taking up a lot of space and was kind of messy to transport. So I ended up putting the pieces in a binder like this for people to flip through. Right now I'm utilizing two one inch binders just so there's still some space taken up on the table 
And people are more likely to switch to another binder if they get bored after taking a few turns in one of them. The decal and sticker situation, I'm still working on a solution. Last resort plan would be to just put them in a photo type album binder. But I do not want to condense things too much. I want to have as much easily organized and easily viewable as possible without having to take too much action. Sometimes people get to like the fifth flip and if they haven't seen anything that resonated with them, they leave when really the sticker or whatever it is that they would have liked maybe like in the second to last page. So with my logic, I want to have things spread out as much as possible, but not to the point where it's messy or it's just overly taking up space. So I'm looking at creating a flat display area, so to speak, using two 12 inch by 12 inch thick plastic sheets that I would attach with a hinge so people could lift up the top sheet, take out a sticker or a decal, and the hinge would allow that top sheet to come back down and keep everything flat. It's clear so people could see quite a few stickers and decals at once and keeps that pressure so the humidity and wind doesn't have free reign to curl and possibly ruin any of the products. I have all the pieces for this, but I'm going back and forth on hinges and which one is gonna work best. So if you guys are interested in an update when this is finally done, just let me know and I'll get that content out to you. For payment processing, I use Square. So Square has the ability to sync with Etsy. So not only is your inventory updated, but it also goes towards your sales count. So that doesn't mean that you can't have products that are not on Etsy in your square inventory. So my product flow when I create something new is it goes on my Kofi shop first because that's just the easiest for me. Etsy is a marketplace. So to make sure people see my items, every time I list something, I have to go and do research into the best way to structure my title, the best way to structure my keywords, my description, and that just takes time. So I'd rather get it up and quick on Kofi and then do that work on Etsy and then post it on Etsy whenever I'm confident that, you know, the SEO is is good enough for what I need. So I'm able to go ahead and add those non Etsy items. And even when Etsy syncs, it doesn't overwrite them. It doesn't change them. They're able to coexist together and I can sell the non Etsy items and update prices just the same as those. So I have the chip reader as well as the MagStripe reader, though I had to buy an audio jack adapter for the MagStripe reader as both my iPad and phone only have the USB-C input. They don't have an audio jack input, but the adapter works fine. So if for whatever reason the chip reader dies as it's completely wireless, it needs to be charged to work. Or if the person just doesn't have a chip card, I can just try to swipe it with the MagStripe reader. The processing fees are higher at this moment, to my knowledge, if you input the card data manually. So that's always my last resort. Plus it takes longer. And some people get a little uncomfortable when you do that. Some people don't really like you focusing on their card information. So you have to keep that in mind. It's nice to have the iPad and the chip reader just easily there and Bluetooth connected and ready to go, but you can absolutely completely accomplish the same flow with just your smartphone and a MagStripe reader. That's exactly how I started out when I started to do these art walks. I don't usually have change for cash just because most people more or less, are fine with paying with card. But this last event, quite a few people wanted to pay with cash. And luckily, most of them did have the exact cash for the price, or they were fine with just paying with card if they didn't have the exact cash. 
But I've decided maybe it is a good option to go ahead and actually have that change. So I bought a cash box that can help me keep bills organized. But even before that, when I would carry a little bit of change, I just had a long pencil pouch with paperclip bills together. And that works just as well, honestly. The thing I also struggle with the most is just keeping up conversation with customers. Me personally, when I'm a customer, I feel a lot of pressure when I go from table to table and I feel bad looking if I don't think I'm going to buy something. So I try to like incognitoly window shop from the corner of my eye and only engage with the booth if there's something interesting that I've seen. And I'm not good enough at reading people to determine who that is yet, if that makes sense. So I'm more reserved with everyone because I don't want to be so overbearing that it stresses out someone with that type of anxiety. So I don't really mention sales or go into a spiel for how things are organized. Just a simple hello, how are you? And leave it up to the customer to, you know, have further communication if they want. I haven't found the middle ground of sounding like a person while presenting your business instead of sounding like a business robot. Right now, I'm kind of too reserved to sound like anything, I guess. My biggest goal is to create connections and community over raw sales numbers. So I think it will take a few more events to get into that headspace, but I'm confident I'll eventually figure it out. Currently, I've been accepted to an art walk that happens on the first Wednesday of every month in the evening. I've also applied to attend a local farmer's market that happens every Saturday, but you don't have to vend every Saturday. And maybe most exciting of all, I applied and got accepted at my very first convention. It's a smaller one that I had attended before and really enjoyed it. So I decided to take a shot at tabling at an actual con to kind of feel out that environment versus the more outdoor based events. I'm super excited and we'll have the event details in the description below, but it's not until January 2020 and it's taking place in Orlando. But the theme is villains, dreams, and nightmares. So I'm super excited to meet a lot of similar aesthetic people, and I think I'm going to have a blast. <laughs> so let's jump into some piece pros and cons. I'll keep it a little short since this was a relatively simple painting. Cons first. Line work. <laughs> I'm still practicing with the brush, and there were definitely some lines... That were frustrating and was a little discouraging as I'm working and I'm just like, well, now this line is extra thick. I don't want it to be extra thick, but it needs to be in order to cover up the mistake because I made an uneven line or some other mistake, I guess. But about the last half, maybe the last quarter of the line work process, I could see myself understanding the pressure a little bit better. I could see myself turning my hand and even the brush in ways that benefited one single stroke without having to stop halfway through and then start again. So that was actually pretty encouraging. And it tells me that I'm making progress and progress <laughs> is good enough for me. I'm going to keep telling myself that because it is true. So it's a method that I think will work for me. It doesn't hurt my wrists like pens do because I don't need to use so much pressure with the brush. I just need more practice and it will get better each and every time. Pros, being able to mix in the light silver shimmer actually worked fairly well for what I wanted to do. I liked how it added some movement to the colors inside of the ball, a little, like a very low key swirl effect, very subtle, but also really lends itself, I think, to the aesthetic of it. I just ended up liking how it looked. And lastly, leaning into mistakes. So the crystal ball was still wet. I was too impatient to wait for it to dry, but also too lazy to go get my heat gun so I could force it to dry. And I started on the base of the smoke, which is that fairly dark blue color. And it bled over into the crystal ball because the crystal ball was not dry. 
And instead of kind of being upset with myself over that, because every time that happens, I'm, are you so impatient? Why don't you just go do the thing you know will fix it? But instead of doing that, I guess I kind of adapted to that mistake. I looked at it and be like, well, that may lend itself better than having such a hard line between the smoke coming out on the inside and the color of the crystal ball on the outside. So I went ahead and did it for the top of all of the broken pieces of the crystal ball and ended up really liking it. And that's all I have for you guys today. I have this original piece available for sale in my Kofi shop if anyone is interested. Thank you to all my supporters. I appreciate you all so, so much. And as always, thank all of you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great day and I will see you all soon. Stay different.